Today we continue our NHL season preview series. We continue looking at teams in the Metro Division, and today we're previewing the Carolina Hurricanes. They were one of the top teams in the NHL last year, an analytical darling. They expected to do great things, unfortunately fell short in the playoffs. They've since lost a lot of players. Can they still contend for the Stanley Cup and be one of the top teams? We'll discuss that and preview what to expect coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we do the season preview for the Carolina Hurricanes. The Hurricanes uh, had a phenomenal year last year, fell short in the playoffs, of course, but regular season was pretty darn good. They had a lot of really good results. Uh, were one of the top teams in many categories. Unfortunately, when it mattered most, they, they did fall short again. They've had a hard time getting over that hump in the playoffs. Um, but uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to recap a little bit about last year and talk about that a little bit further and analyze some of those team stats, individual stats. We'll take a look at their cap space, um, any changes they've made, additions, subtractions on the roster. Take a look at contracts that are coming due this year that we might see extended or uh, any moves we might think are going to happen, as well as uh, looking at the expected roster. And I'll give my thoughts here on how I think they're going to do based on all the changes that we've seen. So let's first recap the 23-24 season for Carolina. Like I said, really, really good. They ended up finishing in second place in the Metro, but um, they were one of the top teams in the NHL still. They had a record of 52-23-7, and 7, 111 points, uh, scored 279 goals, which was seventh best. They only gave up 216, which was fourth best. Uh, that's a really good differential. Special teams, they were amazing. They had the second best power play at 26.9 and the best penalty kill, first overall, 86.4. You can't ask for better special teams results than that. And that was a large part of their um, their overall results. And this really is a case of this team performing as a team. Like They don't have a lot of... Um, I'm, I don't want to say they don't have high-end skill because I really think they do and some of their players kind of fly under the radar a little bit. But they don't have anybody putting up like 100-plus points or anything of that nature. But they do have a lot of guys contributing and just a lot of um, just a lot of good players overall. Like I said, they have a lot of effective players that just get the job done as a team. Uh, so they need to score by committee sometimes, but they tend to do that. Uh, their leading scorer last year, Sebastian Ajo, no big surprise, 89 points. He tends to be their most dynamic offensive player. Seth Jarvis uh, right up there as well, becoming one of the top young, interesting talents in the league. Very, uh, very strong personality, very fun player to watch. Uh, hard not to like and cheer for this guy. Uh, Tara Vinen and Natchez both had 53 points, and Svechnikov had 52, but Svech missed uh, a bunch of games. He only played 59 games last year year unfortunately the knock on Svechnikov throughout his young career is that uh, he has faced a lot of injuries and has missed a decent amount of time which is uh, unfortunate for him because he can be very productive as well uh, in the playoffs they've made the playoffs the past six years uh, so it's been quite a turnaround here during the Rod Brindamore head coaching era uh, six straight years out of those six straight years they've only lost in the, in the first round once uh, they've lost twice in the second round and twice in the conference final uh, so they've had a lot of series wins in there, which is great. Uh, going into this year, cap-wise, they only have $79,913, so they're pretty well maxed out. We did see a change in general manager over the course of the offseason, which was somewhat of a surprise. GM Don Waddell no longer there. Um, Eric Tolsky, of course, takes over as the full-time GM. Of course, a very strong analytical background uh, from for him. So looking at how the roster's changing, they really did suffer a lot of losses. They had a lot of players due for new contracts, and they just could not afford to keep a lot of them, and most of them ended up departing. Um, so they got a very different-looking team this year. Uh, let's talk about the players that are no longer with this club, the big one being Jake Gensel. They really... Uh, went out and made a big acquisition of the deadline. They thought they were going to be able to keep him. He was a good fit. Um, the relationship was good. Lots of interest on both sides for him to stay and re-sign. Ultimately, at the last minute, Tampa swooped in, offered him the same or better contract, a little bit better tax situation in Florida, and he really liked the concept of playing for Tampa as well. So he ended up... Uh, going there. Um they yeah, I mean they lost they lost Gensel and that that was a big blow. Like they needed an extra um another top six like you know proven prolific scorer. They finally found him, got it done through trade. They'd managed to do it without giving up the moon. 
and then they lose him in free agency. Uh, it's a big blow for sure. Not to mention that they also lost some other depth forwards like Tara Vinen and Nason. Um, Evgeny Kuznetsov decided that um, he didn't want to play in the NHL anymore, and they mutually terminated his contract. They lost a couple of key pieces on the blue line that have been there a long time, and Brett Pesci and Brady Shea. Uh, along with D'Angelo, they let him go. Dylan Coughlin was moved, and Antti Ranta is not back either. So lots of uh, long-time Canes not there. Uh, like I said, you know, big changes on the blue line, some big changes up front between the top line player like Gensel and then your middle of, middle lineup guys like your glue guys, your um, you know, your depth, your secondary scoring like Terravine and Nason. Big blows there. Uh, new to the team this year, they've got Jack Roslovic, who came over. Of course, he finished last year as a trade deadline with the Rangers. Uh, they signed William Carrier, longtime Vegas Golden Knight. And he gets a long-term deal as well. On the blue line, they lost Pesci and Shea, but they signed Shane Gossesbear and Sean Walker. Um, so I think overall their blue line is going to be decent still. Uh, I think Walker and Gosses Bear will be able to give them some pretty good minutes and might not be quite as strong as what Pesci gave because I don't know that either of them are as good as him defensively. But uh, Gosses Bear did have a stint there before, uh, knows the guys, knows the team, uh, should be a good fit there. So, all in all, like I said, Gosses Bear and Walker come in. So, their blue line is still pretty good. They bring in Roslovic, Carrier, then Eric Robinson and Tyson Joes up front. So, nothing too high end. So, they lose Gensel. They lose Teravainen, they lose Nason, lose Kuznetsov, and those are the guys that come in to replace them. So there's not a lot of offensive talent there coming into this lineup. So that concerns me, for sure. Looking at players that are due for new contracts, uh, that we could see extensions throughout the season, I don't think we're, there's no RFAs, so we're not going to see any error, pending RFA extensions. On the UFA side, it's mostly shorter-term players that are, are – um, depth guys that are on you know, one-year deals or um, just not, you know, a big piece here like Roslovic and Jose who just signed, Robinson who just signed, and then Jesper Fast and um, Brendan Lemieux on their final year. So I don't know that Carolina is really going to be a team that we're going to see contract extensions. So lots of your forward group back on the back end. You've got Orlov and Burns are uh, are on their final year of their deals. I don't. Th- imagine Burns comes back at his age. Uh, I'd be curious to see what happens with Orlov. Orlov has been a good defenseman. Um, you know, a little bit older now, so I'm not sure what the plans are there. And then Riley Stillman and Freddie Anderson too. So, again, I would think over time here, the, the goal is to give the net to Kachekov. Um, so we'll see. But, uh, yeah, there definitely won't be a lot of extensions done throughout the season. Uh, if anything, maybe Orlov, maybe Anderson. But, yeah, the forward group, you're not going to see it at all, I don't think. And maybe on the back end and, and between the pipes a little bit. But that's about all on that front. As far as the roster goes, they said your goaltending, you're going to be Freddie Anderson and, and Pyotr Kachekov with Spencer Martin being uh, third on the list. Uh, Martin does have to clear waivers to go to the minors. Hopefully he doesn't get picked up. He was placed on waivers actually today, but this video won't hit YouTube until tomorrow. So uh, hopefully uh, for their sake, he gets uh, cleared and can remain with the organization, but he could be a good piece to be picked up. Your back end pairs on the, on the blue line, you're probably looking at Burns and Slavin, Orlov and Chatfield, Walker and Gossesbear, most likely going to be your top six D. In the forward group, you're probably going to have Aho, Jarvis, and Sveshnikov. Uh, your second line could consist of Natchez, Kakaniemi, and Roslovic. That concerns me. If Kakaniemi has to play in your second line, he, he has not been consistent and really good enough to live up to his end of the contract there. Um, Natchez will be interesting. Of course, he was a player we all expected to be moved, and he wasn't. He signed for two years, so we'll see. Uh, I expect him to have a big year. We'll see about Rob, but Roslovic and Kakanemi on your second line. It uh, really concerns me with their depth. Uh, your third line, Martinuk, Stahl, Carrier, that's a pretty good third line. You're going to get lots of physicality, lots of experience, um, good penalty killing, and all that. So, like, that's a good third line. Fourth line of Jack Drury, uh, Tyson Jost, Brendan Lemieux, maybe. Um, Lemieux and Jost are very replaceable players. I wonder what they're going to do with Jackson Blake and Bradley Nadeau. 
They're the only two rookies I really think are going to have an opportunity here to make an impact on this roster. Um, I wonder if they can grab spots and maybe over time here if we'll see at least one of those guys play their way into that second line. I do think there's an opening there that I can see one of them maybe if they if they get the opportunity to maybe bump either Kakaniemi or Roslovic out of a spot. Um, so we'll see on that front. But those two rookies could very well be impactful. Uh, this year as well so overall I, I don't think they're better than new jersey or the rangers in their division i think they can still be competitive and, and be stronger than teams like pittsburgh and washington islanders so to me they're probably going to be competing for that number three spot that's probably what i see as a best case scenario but on all honesty i could see it being going anywhere from three to four i don't think they would slip any lower than four in their division um the goaltending should still be pretty decent. I think their blue line, even though they lost some good players, they brought in some good players too. So I think, like I said, maybe it's a slight downgrade, but not drastic. So I think their blue line is still going to be really good. And then up, up front is my concern. I, I think they're going to struggle to score more so than in, in recent years and more so than last year especially. Um, so they're definitely going to be looking for a big-time top six, uh, top six forward acquisition before the deadline. If they're going to go into the playoffs and have a chance to be going deep again, um, they're going to need to find another Gensel. Uh, they need another another scoring forward. There's no doubt. And lost one of their rookies completely surprised us and has a breakout year, which you know hard to say. And if Nate just doesn't really bounce back and break through again, like the secondary scoring is a big concern for me with this Carolina team. So I do think they might struggle against teams like the Devils or the Rangers especially. And we saw, obviously, Washington make some moves. You know, I wonder how they'll compare. Um, hard to say what you're going to get out of Pittsburgh and Philly. Islanders, you know, they might be in for a tougher year and more of a step back than we might think. It just uh, kind of all depends on how it plays out. But in all honesty, they're still going to be a really good team. Rod Brindamore is a great coach. He'll get more out of this group than most people could. And uh, I think at the end of the day here, they'll probably fall into that number three spot. But all in all, they are very much depleted. Uh, they lost a lot, and it's going to be tough um, to continue to go at the same rate that they had been the last number of years. So let me know your thoughts on this Carolina Hurricanes team and what you think they can accomplish for the upcoming 24-25 NHL season. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.